everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you how to make some really easy watercolor Halloween decorations for... <laughs> what are you doing? Is that a hug? Kiss? Back to what I was saying. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you how to make some really cute Halloween illustrations that you can use for decorations or cake toppers during the fun holiday season of Halloween, my favorite. So let's do it. Okay, so to start, I'm just gonna go through my materials. I have my Arches watercolor paper, my Winsor Newton Cotman watercolors, my Princeton snap brush in a size six, and my water and my paper towel, and we're ready to go. So we're gonna be doing a few cute Halloween illustrations. And after I'm gonna show you how to create them into a really cute banner or even like little cupcake toppers. So let's just dive right in. So the first one we're gonna do is a ghost. Now a ghost is either white or transparent and obviously we can't do that on white paper. So you're gonna take a really, really light wash of gray. Um, if you have Payne's gray, that's great. Or you can use any color tint, like a really, really light purple, whatever you like, indigo, but you're gonna take a really light wash of it. So I just had some Payne's gray in here and some indigo mixed from before and I just kept adding water. So it's very, very light. And even though you think you might not be able to see it, once it dries on the paper, you will be able to see it a bit more. Okay, so I'm gonna take this light wash and I'm just going to do a curve for the head up here. And then I'm just going to bring it down and then just do a few waves. Like it's the bottom of the ghost, like that. And then you're just gonna fill the whole thing in with that light wash a bit darker there just gonna add more water and although it may seem really really light um, which it is when it dries it shows up a bit more and also if you end up cutting it out it will show up too and I actually might go back in and add a bit of a purple tint to it so I'm gonna take some Dioxazine purple, really, really light. Bring it over here and just along the bottom. Because we're gonna be making some cute ghosts, not some scary ones. So I'm just gonna have a tint of purple or you could do blue, like that, okay? And then you could do them all different shapes too. And so we're gonna wait for this layer to dry and then after we will do the face. But while we're waiting for it to dry, we're gonna move on to our next little illustration, which is going to be a pumpkin. So you've seen me do a few pumpkin tutorials now, um, but we want this one to be a bit more simple and kid-friendly, cutesy. So you're just going to actually do the same kind of thing where you're doing the sections. Okay, actually, I might get a bigger brush. I'm gonna use my size 10. I'm just gonna fill it in. Do a C curve to the side. Do another C curve to the other side. If you haven't watched my pumpkin tutorial, go over there now and watch it, because it's a good one. I could honestly paint pumpkins all day. And then another curve. So you're doing five sections in total. And then another curve. Okay, oops, there we go. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go back in with my orange, make it brighter, and I'm just gonna go along the edges of those curves. You can move the color in if you like. I just like to leave the center parts a little bit lighter. So it has a nice highlight. I might add some yellow ochre in there too. And you can always do different shapes too. Maybe you can do tall ones, lumpy ones. Let's do one more just to show you a different way to do them. So I'm gonna do a different kind of oval, like a lumpier. Actually, let's make it longer. 
is one curve, two curves, three curves. <laughs> I know you can count, but I'm going to count it at anyway. And four curves. Oop. There we go. Okay, you can make them a little lumpy, bumpy, whatever you like. And then again, just go back in around the edges. that. I'm actually going to take my smaller brush just for a second. I might add a bit of brown to those sections just to define it a bit more. I'm just going to blend it out. I don't want it too, too dark. Okay. Okay, so we're going to let those dry those dry before we do the faces on them or the stems. Okay? <clears throat> now the next illustration we're going to do is a really simple cat face. So, you're going to take your black, a light wash of your black, not too dark, and you're going to do the letter U like that. And you're going to go bring it up, do a triangle, go over, up make another triangle fill it in and then just to add a bit of like texture and dimension i just like to go back in with some darker bits just add some dark patches like that and then we will come back and do the detail on that one after too. Okay, and now the next illustration is going to be a leaf. So I am just going to take whatever colors I have here. <laughs> Oranges, reds, like that. And these aren't gonna be as detailed leaves as our last one. So um, I'm gonna do a maple leaf. So let's start with a, a line down. This is an easy way to freehand a maple leaf. And you're going to turn that top into a point. You're going to do one little point at that side, one little point on that side, and bring it down. Okay, fill it in a bit. Like that. Then you're going to do the same thing again on these points. So turn that into a point, one little triangle to that side, one little triangle to that side, connect it down. Same thing, bring it down, and then you can always add a bit more, like another little triangle there, another little triangle there, just to make it a bit more full, okay? Then you're going to do another line down here, and one down here, do the same thing. Turn that into a triangle, one little one on that side, one little one on that side. Same thing. Okay, and it looks too thin there, so you're just gonna connect it like that, and then connect it at the bottom here. Okay, and then a stem. So now you get to go in, I actually might bring these out a bit more. Okay, but just play with it. Now I'm going to go back in with some darker colors. Maybe I'll do some red along here. Drop some red along the sides. I'm going to do another little point down there. Okay. My 
might drop some yellow in there. Brown. And then again, we will do more detail on these when it is all dry. But just for now, just drop all the colors in that you want. And to get the points a bit sharper, you might want to use a smaller brush. This brush wasn't the best to do that with, but it's all good. Okay, and so I'm just going to leave that to dry, and then I'll come back. And now we're going to do another leaf. Um, I'm going to take this green. I'm going to start with a stem like this. It's going to be all through the middle. I'm going to bring it up to the one side, bring it up to the other. Fill it in. You can even leave a little bit of white space where that middle part of the stem would be through it. Like this. And then you again, you can just start dropping in color. Make it darker, lighter. I'm gonna put some yellow in there. Maybe a bit of orange. You can even add little like spikes to it. Spikes, like little zigzag, <laughs> zigzag, like kind of jagged edges. Like that if you want. I'm really good at speaking today. There's um, an artist on YouTube, Echo Gillette, I want to call I think her last name is. Anyway, she has this like saying or these t-shirts that say I words for garbage and it's brilliant because I too words for garbage. <laughs> Can't speak most of the time and that's what motherhood does to you. Okay, so there's some leaves and then the last one we're going to do is a witch's hat. So I'm going to take my purple, my dioxazine purple here and I'm going to do a triangle. Before I forget, I want to leave a square here for the buckle on the hat. And then do another little purple square in the middle, okay? And then I'm going to do a curve at the bottom of this triangle. Fill it in. And then from the top, you're just going to bring it down like a curve. And you're going to it's like this witch's hat is kind of falling over. I'm just gonna thicken up this hat a bit. Okay, like that. And then you're going to do the brim of the hat. So you're gonna go out on both sides and then just a curve, or you can even do like a little, you could do just like a U shape, a really like stretched out U like curve, or you can just do like an S curve, which comes in and out. Totally up to you. And then fill it in. Now you're gonna go back in with your dioxazine purple, like straight from the paint, and you're gonna go and drop all that color in. Okay, or along one side. Mostly is gonna be darker, and then bring it over. You can go along the other side too. But you want to have that one side really dark and you want to kind of leave this area a bit lighter. It just adds a bit of dimension to it and it looks really cool. Um, also, you're going to take some black, if you have some black, and you're also going to drop it on that side to make it darker. Okay, and then maybe underneath here. Like that. Just move the color around this. Like that. Okay, so now we're gonna wait for everything to dry and then we will come back in and do the detail. Okay, so the first layer of our illustrations are all dry, so now we can go back in and add the cute details. So, first, the ghost. We're gonna take our smaller brush and all you're gonna do is draw one oval for the eye and you can leave a little white bit if you like. And then two ovals, like that, that's it. And then one more for the mouth. 
And then to make this ghost a little, just a little bit cuter, I'm gonna take some permanent rose here. Just a really, really little bit, even lighter than that. And just add some rosy cheeks, which makes no sense, but it looks cute. So <laughs> deal with it, right? Okay, that even may be too dark. I want like the littlest bit of rosy cheek, like that cute little ghost. Okay, and now we're going to move on to the pumpkin. So you can start off by doing the stem. Just stem like that. Add a little bit of black if you want to make it a bit darker. Let's do this one too while we're at it. That's too black. Okay. Just like a rectangle going up. And now we're going to do the face of our jack-o'-lanterns. Okay, so there's so many different faces. You can do the traditional like little you know, triangle eyes and whatnot. Um, but I'm gonna do a different one. So I'm gonna do a curve, a line at the bottom, and then a curve like that. I'm gonna fill it in. And then another one. It almost looks like a witch's hat. Do, do, do. And then I'm gonna do kind of like a side grin. So I'm gonna do a little swoop up here. Swoop down, this guy's gonna have a missing tooth. So I'm just gonna go up, down, to the side, down. I'm gonna meet the rest of that little mouth over here. Fill it in with black. There we go. Uh, maybe you could do A really happy pumpkin. Let's do it like a laughing pumpkin. So you're just gonna do a triangle like that. And then let's have this guy missing some teeth too. This guy's happy. I wanna make these happy pumpkins. So I'm actually using these. I'm throwing my son and his friends, um, the first Halloween party. I've been waiting for this my whole life because my Halloween is my favorite holiday of the year. And we're doing a Halloween party, so I'm gonna be turning these into little cake toppers and little a little banner, so we wanna make them happy and jolly. Okay, so there you go. There's two cute little faces, They're both happy. Now onto the cat, super simple. Honestly, just keep it as simple as you can. Two eyes. One, two, might do a little zigzag on the forehead. Um, I'm gonna do some whiskers. And I am gonna do a mouth, or a nose, but I want it pink, so I'm gonna do the mouth first. I'm gonna go down, curve to the side, like that. And I'm gonna take my permanent rose, which is my pink, just gonna do a cute little pink nose. And then this guy's gonna have rosy cheeks too. So why not? Okay, there's a cat. Now for our leaves. You're just gonna do very simple lines. One going down. For the big points of all of those pointy areas, that's where you're going from, okay? And then you're going to do little points to the sides like that. So each big point has a line, a vein coming from it. Like that. Okay. And then this one, you can even use green if you want. Just go straight through. Simple, simple. And now for the buckle on the hat, I'm gonna go in with some yellow, yellow ochre, because I like it's kind of like a goldy yellow. Like that. And then you're gonna wait for this part to dry before you do the next part. And the reason for that is because you don't want the yellow to bleed in with this black ribbon that will go around where that buckle is. that. 
like that. And you can even do like a little line for the brim, whatever. And there you go. Honestly, the simplest little illustrations would turn out so cute. So I'm just going to show you. Here's some ones that I did before. And I just, I cut them out. I'm going to string them together for a banner. I'm going to put toothpicks on the bottom of some of them, stick them in the cupcakes. And there you go. So the banner idea I actually got from an artist off Instagram. I will link her Instagram page below. She does these adorable watercolor banners and they're so cute. So I decided to try my own for this. Um, by doing this, I just hot glued the illustrations onto a piece of twine and put paper on the back so I didn't burn my fingers. And I also ended up putting pom-poms in between each illustration to look really cute. And then I put some toothpicks on the back of them, like you can see for these cupcake toppers, and it all turned out great. Thank you all so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it, and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram for more. You know, it's getting increasingly more difficult to film with you. I love you, but stay still. Stay still. Bye. 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 Yeah, she's gone.